Today's government and stakeholders can look back with pride at the approach we all took in managing the oil sands deposit and the consistent and acceptable picture we have created from whatever perspective you look at it. From whatever perspective you look at it. From whatever perspective you look at it. In short, it is an enterprise of epic proportions, akin to building the pyramids or China's Great Wall, only bigger. The tar sands are the largest industrial development and the largest energy project on the face of the planet. The land that we're talking about being disturbed uh, is an area 149,000 square kilometers, an area the size of, of the state of Florida. From whatever perspective you look at it. The heart of this ecosystem is the very antithesis of all of these values that we've been talking about. And I think these are some of the core values that make us proud to be Canadians. This is the Alberta tar sands, the, the largest oil reserves on the planet outside of Saudi Arabia. Trapped underneath the boreal forests and wetlands of northern Alberta are these vast reserves of this sticky, tar-like bitumen. And the mining and the exploitation of that is creating devastation on a scale that the planet has never seen before. Today's government and stakeholders can look back with pride at the approach we all took in managing the oil sands deposit and the consistent and acceptable picture we have created from whatever perspective you look at it. Syncrude, just one of the licensees in just one of their tailings ponds, dumps 250,000 tons of this toxic gunk every single day. That's creating the largest toxic impoundments in the history of the planet. So far, this is enough toxin to cover the face of Lake Erie a foot deep. And the tailings ponds range in size up to 9,000 acres. That's two-thirds the size of the entire island of Manhattan. From whatever perspective you look at it. Uh, just 70 miles downstream is the world's largest freshwater delta, the Peace Athabasca Delta. The only one at the juncture of all four migratory flyways. This is a globally significant wetland, perhaps the greatest on the planet. Incredible uh, habitat for half the bird species you find in North America migrating here and also the last refuge for the largest herd of wild bison, and also, of course, critical habitat for another a whole range of other species. But it, too, is being threatened by the massive amount of water being drawn from the Athabasca, which feeds the, these wetlands, and also the incredible toxic burden of the largest toxic unlined impoundments on the planet, which are leaching into the food chain for all the species down. From whatever perspective you look at it. And here we have the plan out to 2030, what they're proposing is an almost four-time increase in production, and that would industrialize an area the size of Florida. In doing so, we'll be removing a large part of our greatest carbon sink and replacing it with the most high greenhouse gas emission oil in the future. The world does not need any more tar mines. The world does not need any more pipelines to wed our addiction to fossil fuels. And the world certainly does not need the largest toxic impoundments to grow and multiply and further threaten the downstream communities. And let's face it, we all live downstream in an era of global, global warming and climate change. What we need is we all need to act to ensure that Canada respects the massive amounts of fresh water that we hold in this country. We need to ensure that these wetlands and forests that are our best and greatest and most critical defense against global warming are protected and we are not releasing that carbon bomb into the atmosphere. And we need to all gather together and say no to the tar sands. And we can do that. There is a huge network all over the world fighting to stop this project. And I quite simply think that this is not something that should be decided just in Canada. Everyone in this room, everyone across Canada, everyone listening to this presentation has a role to play and I think a responsibility because what we do here is going to change our history. It's going to color our possibility to survive and for our children to survive and have a rich future. The world is no longer watching us to see if we'll fail. They are now lined up to learn from our success. Hello, I'm Robert Redford. I can understand why oil companies love tar sands. 
There's a lot of money to be made by strip mining and drilling the dirtiest oil on the planet. But why should the rest of us pay the price? Developing the Canadian tar sands is destroying our great northern forest at a terrifying rate. It's producing enough carbon pollution to wreak havoc with our climate for decades to come. And the pipelines that carry this toxic tar sands fuel are a direct threat to our own drinking water supplies. So if you ask me, tar sands oil is exactly the kind of dirty energy we can no longer afford. It may be great for oil companies, but it's killing our planet. There's no energy security in that. The saner choice is clean energy. But we're not going to get it unless millions of us demand it. So please join me in saying no to tar sands oil and yes to clean energy.